Good morning. My name is George Norris. I head up the uh, payload mission management area in, in the ISS payloads office. Um, and Rod gave you a good introduction of how you get into, uh, into the process for us to start integrating you. And my job is once, uh, once that Rod and uh, working with Julie has decided what the right things to do are, we figure out how to go make it happen. And so uh, this is the mission integration overview. So next chart. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the process in general of uh, mission integration. We assign uh, someone to help shepherd folks through the process called our payload integration manager. Um, they work with the individual payload developers uh, and principal investigators to develop a schedule, define the milestones for them so they know what products that they have to deliver, they know what products the, the program is going to deliver for them, uh, and make sure we lay out all the time, uh, it all on a timeline so everybody understands the entire process and they'll help you through it every step of the way. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the process itself uh, at a high level, uh, the different time frames that uh, we have, the strategic, the tactical, and the operations, um, what documentation we'll be looking for along the way, uh, and uh, how you get manifested, which Rod gave you a, the introduction to that. Um, then the payload tactical plan, which is kind of our Bible that, that houses all the integration data that we need um, to support our operations as well as let the rest of the program know what we're doing so that we can integrate with the other pieces of the program as well. And then how we make changes, because as we know, anytime something's baseline, the next thing you do is make a change to it. Um, as your hardware matures and your, your programs mature, we are uh, capable of making those changes as we go through the process. So next chart. So the intent of this is to give you a basic understanding. Obviously, we're not going to go into the details of all the, the integration processes or we'd be here all day. But I'll give you a, a brief overview of that and uh, what support that we can provide to the payload. Next chart. The payload integration manager, I put him on the first chart because that's usually your first interface to the integration teams. Once that, uh, we'll go through the integration process a little bit more and how it works, but once you've made it on a research plan and, and it's been baselined, uh, that kicks off the rest of us to go do work now. So we have to make sure that we understand what you need and how you'll, you'll fit with the rest of the payload activities that we're doing and how we can integrate you on orbit. So the PAM works with you every step of the way and working with the other pieces of the program, payload safety, our engineering folks, our operations folks, software folks if you need uh, software, um, ground processing, all of those things to make sure that you have somebody that understands all those things and can help you figure out what the right thing to do is. So they're the first person that, that you interface with on the uh, integration team. Next slide. This is an overview of the integration process. Uh, it kind of goes through the individual time, frame, time frames. The strategic, which is in our mind around outside of the I minus 18, I minus 16 time frame, anything uh, ahead of that is in strategic. So we don't have you assigned to a specific flight. We don't have um, all the detailed requirements. We just know that you exist and know what you want to do. We haven't fit you in with, another, with a plan yet uh, to make sure that we can go execute. And then the tactical time frame is where we take over uh, in the integration process. The Rod just described the, the beginnings of that on how you get a re into a research plan. Uh, and then we take that and once we have the data for what you want to do, we go and take that data and put it into all the products uh, across the program um, to make sure that all the pieces come together when they need to. And then the next phase is the operations phase when you actually execute your activities on orbit, and, and then post-flight, uh, crew return, whatever data, uh, and hardware samples that we need to bring, bring back after that, we shepherd you through that entire process. Next slide. The strategic time frame, um, I won't go into too much detail on this. Um, basically, here's a, a flow chart that kind of works you through with all the things that we would be looking for from you. Um, an export classification letter up front in case we have to send your hardware to another country to, to launch, um, or we have operations in a partner module or any of those things. Uh, we need to know what your export classification is. 
And then down the uh, right-hand side of this chart lists uh, the agreements that we have with the, the program. We do a payload integration agreement with the payload developer, which um, basically tells you what our integration process and what we're expecting from as, a, uh, as an integrator uh, of your hardware and what we expect you to do and also what you expect, can expect from us uh, and any deviations for what we no normally do, we document in this agreement. And then develop a uh, delivery schedule and we go through safety reviews, uh, the upfront safety reviews, phase zero and one and phase two. And then at the end, when you get to the far right over here, at the end of the strategic time frame, um, you get assigned to a research plan and we go integrate you. So next chart. So this is the tactical time frame. Um, once we have baselined you into a plan, we'll go and start, uh, as I said, trying to get your data permeated throughout the rest of the program so that we can get uh, all the pieces to support you as we need to. So we'll need your manifest data, stowage data, any special packing requirements, uh, on-orbit stowage requirements, um, which will entail drawings, um, any training units to do crew training with, um, operations data, planning data, um, any procedure development that we need to do. All those happen up front. Um, then we go through the remainder of your safety reviews, your phase three, um, which may be vehicle specific once we determine what you're going to launch on. Uh, any crew training you have to do, if uh, depending on your, your requirements, we'll have individual data sets, whether that's uh, software for command and data handling, um, manifest stowage procedures, all those things will get baselined. And uh, any testing at KSC that's required, depending on your complexity uh, of the payload. And then the individual launch vehicle integration requirements. We work with the launch vehicle provider to make sure that we, uh, they know what to expect when you show up and you know what to expect from them whenever you show up as well. The next chart. So after the tactical, after we've integrated you and gotten all our data and everybody's ready and the, uh, the vehicles launch and, and your hardware's on orbit, the crew that's gonna operate you is on orbit, um, then we go into the operations phase. So first, before we launch you, we have to certify that we've done all the things that we need to do to make sure that your payload's safe, um, that the vehicle's safe and the crew's safe with all those things. So we do our certification of flight readiness um, before launch. There's launch, then your on-orbit operations phase, uh, and then landing and then post-landing. We also uh, help with post-landing payload processing, returning your hardware to you as well as any samples um, that are necessary, um, and including baseline data collection post-flight, if that's required. So next slide. The joint agreements that we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a unique payload integration agreement that we assign. Rod Jones signs uh, for the ISS payloads office. And then we get the payload developer to sign um, to show that both, piece, both pieces understand how we're gonna go integrate you and what, what we're going to provide for you uh, and how we're gonna help you through the process. And then our PIM, our payload integration manager, develops a specific schedule for you depending on when your hardware is going to launch, what, your, what vehicle it is it's going to launch on, which has unique requirements, um, and your operations requirements. Uh, all of those things that our payload integration manager will lay out a schedule working with you to make sure you understand the entire flow. And then once we get to uh, working with our engineering folks, we do payload unique ICDs, our verification requirements. Um, to make sure that we understand um, the details of your interfaces with the, with the vehicle and with the rest of our uh, payload hardware. And then our payload safety data package uh, is a requirement, working with our payload safety review panel. Um, 
to make sure they understand the details of your experiment and that it is safe on orbit and in the launch and return vehicles. And then the payload tactical plan is where we're looking for the majority of your integration data. Um, we'll be looking for the details on uh, the manifest, what items you want to fly, uh, how big they are, what they weigh, your crew time requirements, uh, any operations that are required in a partner vehicle. Um, all those things we'll be looking to, to baseline in this payload tactical plan. And then beyond that, there's unique payload data sets depending on your requirements that are the individual details for each of these things, whether it be procedures, planning data, um, KSC technical requirements, uh, all of those things we have specific um, unique data sets for. Next chart. This is kind of a high level overview of what would be included in the uh, the payload integration manager schedule that they'll work with you. In the strategic time frame, we do assign our uh, some payload integration managers in the strategic time frame if the payloads require it. Usually that are just external payloads that uh, need a longer lead time for working through the process. Uh, but in the tactical time frame, these are some of the, of the milestones that you'll see on the chart. Um, and it lists all the data set requirements, the agreements that we have to do, uh, as well as the safety milestones and individual vehicle integration requirements. Next chart. So this kind of picks up where Rod left off. The top block there, the research planning working group, uh, as you turn through that process, we are working with Rod during that process to develop our increment specific um, research plan uh, which is of, is of interest to us because we have to develop the payload tactical plan, as I mentioned earlier. So as Rod's going through developing the, uh, the research plan, we're providing some feasibility assessments, as he said, on an individual payload basis. Um, all our, each of our integration teams look at, um, at the data that's provided for the payloads and determines if we think we're going to have any integration issues along the way or any risk as we go through. And then we do roll-ups for um, baseline data collection, which is looked at across the complement, as well as our cold stowage uh, activities that are looked at across the complement. So all those things go back into ROD, and we maybe do another iteration of the research plan as we roll in our recommendations um, forward. So once we've all come to, uh, to agreement uh, on the research plan, then we develop, we being mission integration, develop the payload tactical plan that's taken forward to the uh, payloads control board and the multilateral payloads control board because we also capture our international partners data um, to baseline. And that's the data that we work from, from there on. Next chart. Just an individual chart on the payload tactical plan. It is an annex to our increment definition and requirements document that the program develops. Again, we have to fit uh, into the, uh, the overall objectives and the activities that are going on uh, across the space station, across the entire program. The other uh, activities are EVA activities, or um, vehicle traffic, the other objectives that the program has. We have to make sure that we fit in with those and there's no conflicts there. So this document provides our integrated ascent, descent, and on-orbit resource requirements. It also captures the research objectives um, in, this, uh, in this plan, our priorities of what we have developed as the things that we want to do in each stage and each flight uh, as the most important to accomplish, and then our on-orbit payload topologies <clears throat> for that given set of increments on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. So it's a top level document that defines resource requirements, basically, is what the payload tactical plan is. But we also use it to communicate up and out to the rest of the program that is outside of our payload community. Next chart. So once we baselined it, first thing we do is go change it. What, uh, no. what good would we be if we had stale data and couldn't, couldn't react to, uh, to changes? So, 
once the, the tactical plan is baselined, we have a change evaluation form, is what we use as our internal configuration management uh, of the document. Um, we also use it to change our, our flight manifest uh, that we, uh, we take forward to the rest of the program. Um, so we have a change evaluation form that our PIM will help you uh, through that process as we go forward how to fill those out and what data we need to provide and what we need to ad adequately assess what your change is and how that in affects us depending on where we are in the integration flow. So as we do those, we, we update our payload tactical plan. We have a working version that we update uh, for every CEF that's approved. It gets rolled into there immediately, um, and you can find it on our website. And then maybe twice an increment will roll a revision to the, to the payload tactical plan um, out for the rest of the program to see and formally document. But we maintain our working version that allows us to be more flexible uh, in, in what we're working to. And I mentioned the uh, IDRD Annex 1, the flight manifest. We also use our change evaluation form to, to change the details that we, we have in the flight manifest. Uh, if the quantity changes, if the part number changes for some reason, all those things we track in the, in the Annex 1. We can use a CEF to make those updates. And that rolls into the overall um, flight manifest that the rest of the program works. Next chart. So, in summary, we're here to, once you've been defined as, as a, uh, an objective that we need to meet from the research planning working group working with Julie as the program scientist to work the priorities. Once all that's determined, we are trying to shepherd you through the process to, to make sure that you're successful um, and still maintain a, a safe vehicle and safe crew. I think that's all that I had, if there's any questions. Forgive me, I'm so a little bit confused about the timing. Um, from payload integration to flight, it's L minus 36 months, so it's three years. And most of the sponsoring agencies, NASA included, their funding cycle is about three years. So there's about a year or two years difference between award and flight and then completion of data results and stuff. So is there movement afoot to sort of get those cycles in sequence or closer so that and you can actually fly, get your data back, and write it up as a PI? and still fit within the mission integration schedule? I think the, part of the problem is were the, uh, the calls for the payloads and, uh, and the cycle that headquarters is on and the other folks are on to, to put the AOs out and get new payloads is not dependent on space station specifically and what cycle we're on. So when they do the funding for you and you're turned on to go do these things, at that point, whenever you're ready to work with us in the strategic time frame, we can help you determine when you would be ready and about where in our process you would fit. So it may just mean we, we push you one increment down um, because our space station is 365 days a year and they're continuing. So they're operating independent of, of what payloads are, are in, the, in the pipeline or not. So we have to make sure that once you're turned on and, and are working um, and have a development schedule, that we can try and pick the right point in the process where you would fit. So it's kind of independent of our, our integration schedule, which is going to happen on a, on a regular basis. We're just turning every time. And so depending on where you are, we'll make sure that we pick the right point so that we can make sure you're successful and can go all the way through. We don't want to push you too early to try and scrunch any of the, the development or any of those things, because that's not fair to you. And we don't want to push you too far, which you have to fund the project longer and wait longer to get your science results. So it's a delicate thing trying to, to pick the right place for you uh, in the process. So we have folks that would work in the strategic time frame to help you with that. To, to shorten it. Um, or, I, I we, guess, you know, the scenario you just described is that um, 
the PI and the payload developer are put in the position of trying to uh, accelerate the integration schedule to make their schedule, or going back to the sponsoring agency saying, well, my three years is up and I haven't flown yet because I haven't gotten integrated and manifested. And it sounds like there's no real resolution to that. I think you know we have two processes that we can use. We have our normal integration process, which I've, I spoke here, and depending on your complexity and how you fit, we have a, a an accelerated process or a, a lean process that we could help you go through this cycle faster. But it depends on what your requirements are uh, and, and how much outside the norm we would have to go do to, to make you fly. So there are things that we can do to speed up the process. Uh, but it depends on what your payload is and what your requirements are. Thanks. So, uh, I have a question about the uh, uh, payload training facility that they got at JSC. And how much lead time do you give uh, the customer to deliver their package, to put in the rack, work out the kinks, uh, and the procedures before they start training the crew? And usually a lot of that uh, is determined by the payload developer when they'll have their training unit available uh, in some cases. Um, so a a as soon as they have it available, I think we would be uh, willing to work with them and get it, uh, get it integrated. But that doesn't mean that we can go do training because we have to develop procedures, as you mentioned, uh, any displays that we have to do, all of those things have to be developed um, with working through our operations group, which you'll get the details of that in, in just a little bit. So uh, I think there's nothing that we're, we don't intend to constrain you of when you can deliver the hardware. Usually it's just on when the payload developer has it available to go do. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>